Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I'm going to talk about when baptism runs out. (laughs) When baptism runs out. I know it's a strange title, but baptism actually is something that those of you all who have been through this process, you know, it is an outward demonstration of your faith, your conviction, when you decide that you're going to walk this walk, right? But for some people... That's all it is, is a show for them. It's nothing more than just letting everybody know this is what I'm going to do. But then there is no fruits of the spirit. There is no sincere conviction. There is no sincere repentance. They're not changing their mind about the sin. Mama said, go down the aisle. Daddy said, that's a good thing. But they haven't changed their mind on the sin and they go right out there and they drink and they have their share of parties and drugs. And then they go and they're out here womanizing and all of that. And then God ends up allowing Satan to have his way. And then someone wants to say, well, so-and-so years ago had been baptized as a little child. And -and so-and-so, he's all right. He's good. But something happened after they left their mama's house. Come on now. Something happened, and I'll tell you that when I left my parents' house, having been exposed to the private school years ago, okay, they weren't into the whole uh, going to church and all of that, but I was exposed to a private school, and my grandmother, she was speaking to me about the Lord, and I had an aunt who was a believer, and so there were influences around me, but then once I got away from the private school, and then as time went on, You get older and you get away from your parents teaching. We can't say that, uh, oh, I'm still sold out for Jesus and I'm still a saint or whatever it is that they called you way back when. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I think that people tell lies. I think people exaggerate and I think people have their way of trying to put a dress on a pig. I think people have a way of, uh, just believe in things that Satan puts upon them, especially that old adage of once saved, always saved, right? Um, I got into that years ago when I first uh, started uh, this uh, channel. And uh, when I started reading the Bible for myself, that's not true. Because I can be baptized and uh, go through the whole process of Bible studies and everything else and you know, uh, just be that beacon of light, but then I can turn right around. And if I let Satan have a foothold in my life, I could go out here and hurt somebody, kill him possibly. You see what I mean? And so, uh, the Bible says that we're not supposed to kill. So then if the Bible says we're not supposed to kill and I go out there and I do it anyway, um, how am I still saved? Okay, I'm not thinking about repenting. I'm not thinking about turning my life over to Christ or anything else. I'm still doing me. But then somebody around me says, well, you were saved years ago, so you're all right. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay, and let's just be honest. Let's stop, you know, trying to make ourselves feel good about things. Truth is truth. And when God brings it to us, we are supposed to walk in that truth. We're supposed to walk in the spirit. And a lot of times what happens is once we get away from parents, once we get away from, uh, <laughs> you know, all things that are, um, you know, all things that are righteous and true and honest and we do our own things. We're not thinking about Jesus Christ. Okay. We're not thinking about the Bible. We're not thinking about church. We're not thinking about what people told us years ago. We're thinking about getting our fleshly needs met. And some folks may have been doing really well for a while, but then went back into their old lifestyle. We may not have gotten a memo. We may not have been updated. I'll tell you that the Lord spoke to me and showed me over the Internet an individual who had gone back to jail. Nobody said anything about it, right? Of course, they they're not going to tell you, but went back to jail and uh, this whole business of he's doing better. He's all right. He's good. That was a lie. That was a cover up. That was an exaggeration. This person was back to their old ways again. Okay, so you see, sometimes God, he will uh, just use us in such a way where uh, we end up seeing truth for what it is. No, we're not going to update everybody. We're not going to tell everybody what we know, but we know when folks is dirty and we know when the the enemy 
will deceive people or people will be delusional in their thinking because they don't want to believe that folks was back up to their dirty tricks again. But I know a righteous God. I know a loving God and I know a convicting God and he's not going to leave us in the dark. OK, but if you choose to believe Satan's lies and if you choose to go along with some programming that somebody put upon you of once saved, always saved, then you can keep on believing that lie. Uh, because the truth of the matter is, is that, like I said, when I got out in the world, if I would have died in 1996, I can put my hand up and say that I doubt very seriously I was going to heaven. OK, because I was responsible for the word that I received. OK, and that word that I received was that the sexual immoral was not going to inherit the kingdom of God. The word that I received prior to going through that fight uh, was I wasn't supposed to be living with that man and there was ample opportunity for me to pack up and go if I would have not um, if I would have not uh, received a word then that would have been possibly a different story but I received a word and I knew the truth leading up to what could have possibly been my end so if I would have died in 1996, there would have been those that would have said things like, oh, well, she was a believer and she was OK and she had went to the church. But what they didn't know was that there were some things that the Lord was convicting me on leading up to that. And once again, no, I wasn't going to be in heaven and I wasn't going to be inheriting any kingdom of God. I was going straight to hell. You see, I don't mind talking like this and telling the truth because I know for a fact, having been close to death, that I wasn't going to heaven. So I was fighting for my life, for my soul that day. You see, some people, they don't think that deeply. They don't want to think that deeply because it hurts. It hurts the fact that you already lost a loved one. And then it hurts to know that that loved one did not go to Heaven did not inherit the kingdom of God. That person was acting like a fool leading up to death. And that person wasn't thinking about Jesus Christ. That person didn't have any type of personal uh, connection with God. Uh, the Bible even says, and I'm going to pull out some scripture because I know some people, it's hard for them to wrap their head around it. Because I just want to believe that so-and-so went to a good place. Well, you can believe uh, the lies all you want when we know for a fact that so-and-so did not go to a good place. And I say so-and-so because I'm not naming names. But there have been those family members that I know for certain that uh, the type of lifestyle they were living. And even when they tell you boldly they're not into God. Okay. I mean, <laughs> what? I'm going to put some words in their mouth and say, oh, suddenly they're a believer just because something bad happened to them. When they specifically told me that that's not what they're into and they're not a believer and they really didn't care too much about God, Jesus or the people of God. Come on now. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm going to look at the truth for what it is. They spoke the truth and that was their truth. But there's people that want to turn uh, the truth into a lie because it sounds better, because it looks better, because it makes them feel good until they're faced. OK, with with a uh, reality. OK, now, when it comes to this uh, childhood faith, right, the baptism that took place and the kids, they really didn't know too much what they were doing. OK, um, but they just decided that this was going to be the right thing to do or God may have even moved them toward that direction. But either way, though, it's still up to the parent to teach the child. So if I drop the ball on my children and I decide that I'm not going to teach them too much of anything and I'm going to let them do what they want to do. Then what am I doing? I'm I'm an I'm an ineffective parent. I'm not doing too much of anything, right? And so I'm leaving it up to them to decide their their uh, their uh, walk, their personal relationship with Christ. Which, being that they're a child, they don't quite understand what they committed to. They don't understand when they got baptized uh, the whole process. Um, enough to live it out maybe i understand it but not enough to live it out not enough to walk righteously i don't even understand the child says what righteously means that's a big word you see so it's up to the parent to teach a child train up a child so that they won't depart 
Okay. But once they get out here and they're out here doing whatever with whomever, you know, or with the group, that's out of our hands. We can't keep going back to childhood faith. We're talking about a grown man. Jesus wasn't always a baby. You see what I mean? Eventually he grew up and became a man and he had a mission and he had a personal relationship with his father. Can we say the same about those who move on with their lives and are no longer uh, the type that uh, was uh, doing all of that service back in the day when they were children? You see, some people are still caught up on what somebody did years ago rather than facing the fact that that man fell and he fell again and that man fell again. And then he ended up doing something right for a time period, but then fell back into the mix again, doing any number of ungodly activities. But yet we just want to believe, right? Delusion comes in. We just want to believe that he's good and he's all right. Okay, going into the scriptures. Now, there is a time where Jesus did bless the little children. OK, and that's what the Bible uh, shows us. He blessed them. OK, but it's up to the parents to teach the children. Uh, Luke eighteen fifteen said people were also bringing babies to Jesus to have him touch them. Right. Like they do nowadays, bringing their babies to the ministers to have the ministers pray and touch them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. So you got the elders who they don't like that sort of thing because they understand that the child don't know what's going on. And besides, it's not anything special in the sense that they get some kind of superhero powers or something as a result. So some people got issue with all of all of that spending time with the children and um, showing them all this stuff, dealing with the Bible and all that. They're little. They don't understand and all that. But. Those of us who have children, we know that it starts off with a seed and then eventually that seed grows. OK, so we don't we don't um, not teach children just because they don't understand certain things. We still uh, bless them with uh, some knowledge, with some understanding. OK, um, even if they don't understand all of what we're talking about, at least we give them a little bit. Right. OK, reading on verse 16. But Jesus called the children to him. Right. The parent. You need to call your child or children to you. And this is what uh, Jesus said. He said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. So he looked at the adults as um, people who were hindering the children. OK, for the kingdom. Listen to this. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Right. Children. They die. They, they become sick. They have their share of issues or what have you. Um, the Bible says that the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, right? Children, okay? And then verse 17, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, listen, now this is what he says to the adults. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive, okay, receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So when you had a family member who maybe that, yes, they were baptized years ago or what have you. But then they get to that place where they do not receive the kingdom of God, right? They're not receiving righteousness and truth and, and godly activities and, you know, things that basically God has ushered all of us believers into. They don't receive it. The Bible says, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like a little child, right? A little child, they're open, they're warm. They, they want to learn. They want to ask questions, right? They These people don't do this sort of thing, okay? Some of these rebellious, uh, cold-hearted individuals don't receive this sort of thing, the kingdom of God and, you know, all of these things related to God, like a little child. So the Bible says, we'll never enter it. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like a little child, will never enter it. So this deception, this delusion that people put upon folks who we know for a fact have fell away, was not interested, was doing their own thing. They were their own gods. We cannot say that they received the kingdom of God like a little child. Once again, they will never enter it. Okay. I'm talking to somebody because, you know, I know it hurts, but we can you, you just can't keep going around giving false prophecy, false messages, false lies or uh, uh, false stories, I should say. 
and telling lies on people. You just can't do it. And we got Christians who do that because they want to feel good about things. You know, I know it hurts. I got relatives who's gone, but we cannot be putting stories on them saying that they were uh, about God when they weren't. Let's go back to baptism since folks like to go back to little children type of stuff, childhood, faith, baptism, you know, back in the day and all that. But meanwhile, 20 some, 30 some years of acting like a fool and folks still want to talk about what somebody used to do, used to. OK, and well, they were doing it for a while. Yeah, for a while. But then they went back to their old ways again. OK, we got to stop making excuses for people. A child of God, one thing about it, a true child of God isn't going to follow after Satan. It's going to be about Satan's business. Isn't going to be that child of darkness. Okay? They're not. They're just not. And we don't have too many bona fide believers that are children of light. We got a lot of false believers. We got a lot of fake folks. They act like a believer in front of mama and them. But then they get out there in the world and this is my business and they don't let nobody in their business. But we know their business is illegal or we know their business is unrighteous or we know their business is about going back into that lifestyle. And the Lord says, huh, before you go back into this lifestyle, I'm going to take you out of here. So maybe they were about to turn and then God ended up taking them off the face of this earth um, before they could turn all the way back into that child of darkness again. Because that sort of thing happens too, Lord Jesus. So John, he was baptizing, right? And he stated that he baptized with water. And this is in John uh, 1, uh, verse 26. I baptized with water, John replied, but among you stands one. You do not know he is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Now, he was referring to Jesus, right? And I talked about this in another audio. The study Bible says John the Baptist said he was not even worthy to be Christ's slave to perform the humble task of unfastening his shoes. Now, I'm going to take that scripture and I'm going to apply it to modern day life. OK, we got some folks who's acknowledging Jesus, right? Believing in Jesus will baptize in the name of Jesus. But how they are living their lives is totally contrary. OK, this is where we get that hypocrite label that gets thrown on some of these people they're pretenders they're not real and this is why you get some folks who they won't even go to some of these churches because they know that they got some phony folks in the church they are not even fit to much less say jesus and then want to have the nerve to want to anoint somebody or bless somebody or baptize somebody okay Lord Jesus. Now, if such a great person felt inadequate even to be Christ's slave, how much more should we lay aside our pride to serve Christ? Now, we got individuals once again who they had that childhood baptism, right? Similar to what John did with Jesus. But then they got older, right? They got mixed up with different people or different things, okay? Some of them may not have got mixed up with a bunch of people or things, but their own pride got in the way of them walking wholeheartedly with Christ. OK, you've got to be able to set aside your pride in order to serve Christ. Did that individual who is six feet deep in a grave, did they set aside their pride and walk with Christ leading up to death? Let's just be honest. When we true, when we truly understand who Christ is, okay, chances are at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and even possibly in their early teens, they did not have an understanding of who Christ is. I know my son, who's sixteen, said when he when we when uh, he was younger, and I was talking to him about God and stuff at five and six and seven, he said he didn't really understand. He admitted that he didn't understand, and he's sixteen. When we truly understand who Christ is, our pride and self-importance melt away. So that person who passed away, think of any of them in your family, okay, who had been baptized years ago, but then 
fell by the wayside, but family members want to claim belief, belief in Christ, Christ, and he was still anointed and went to an, a beautiful place, or this uh, young lady, she was uh, all about God and all that, but meanwhile, uh, after their passing, we found out something else, okay? Did they really put away their pride and their self-importance? Okay, we're just asking questions. That's it. We're not trying to get somebody all upset and, oh, you're such a terrible person for questioning this and who are you and all this other stuff. This isn't about that. We're talking about the fact that Satan likes to tell lies and say that people are believers when in fact they're really not. Okay, and just because they pass away doesn't make them um, suddenly a believer. Okay, that's what I'm getting after. And we need to stop telling these falsehoods at these funerals and so forth. Just be quiet. If you have nothing good to say, just be quiet. Don't tell lies on people. And some folks, they just say anything because they want to get close to that insurance money or they want to get close to that will and they want to puff people up and make them feel good about their loved ones. That's, a, that's what a lot of that stuff is about, unfortunately. No, let us use death to convict folks. Let us use death to draw people near to Christ. Let us use death to even create some division, separating the wheat from the tares. Okay. John, once again, 12, 37 says, okay, and, and, and this basically summarizes what I'm talking about. Most people do not believe in Jesus. Okay. And that's a fact. And we can see it by the way they behave, by who they associate with, by their conversation and everything else. We cannot keep going back to what people did during childhood um, to make us feel better about where they are and uh, anything else that we're trying to uh, feel good about. Even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. Okay. So God was doing a lot of things in some of our relatives lives, lots, but yet they still had their doubts. And some of them even went so far as to tell you, I know some in my family did that they were not sold out for Christ and were not interested in the Bible or going to church. Okay. So that right there shows unbelief. We can't make it any more plain than that. Okay. So go through another grief process for some of you all. So-and-so wasn't a believer. Okay. Somebody was telling lies, somebody was exaggerating, but let's just be honest, so-and-so wasn't a believer. And so we need to use that person's death as an opportunity to speak truth, to be, ri to be righteous, to do what is right, right? Stop living the lies and stop sharing other people's lies and their delusions and deceptions. Even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet. Now, back in those days, they had prophets who were speaking about the great Messiah to come. Okay. And so Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Okay. For this reason, they could not believe because as Isaiah says elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes. OK, think about some of these relatives, some of these co-workers, some of these friends. Right. He has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts so they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts nor turn. And I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus's glory and spoke about him. And even now we still got prophets and prophetesses who are speaking about Jesus's glory and who are convicting some people on their sin and who are talking about death to come. I have even been that type of person, that doomsday prophet that went and spoke to different relatives about death to come. With one particular relative, the following day, that woman passed away. I gave the word the day before she passed away the following day. I gave the word weeks prior and that person uh, ended up passing away weeks later. I gave the word a month prior and then two people back to back in the family passed away. Okay. One particular relative was concerned about her brother who had passed away. 
and had went so far as to ask the uh, son if his father had been a believer, if his father had been going to church and everything. And the son, who was out there doing his share of things, okay, wasn't necessarily living all that righteously himself, was took offense to all of the questions. All she wanted was some peace of mind concerning her brother, but she didn't get it. Because the truth of the matter was, was that the man was not sold out on Christ. The man was out there doing what he wanted to do. Okay? And the son was following after him. The father was a drunk. The son was a drunk. Okay? And so you got these individuals who, they don't like when you start questioning about their relatives. Because, of course, they're going through a grief process. And that's not the time to do it. That's not the time to do it. The time to minister was prior to that person's passing away. If that one really was so close and so in love with family, they would have been speaking to family about Jesus Christ. Every chance they got. Man, you're not living right. Man, what's going on with you? Uh, woman, what's, what's up with you? Why are you doing these things? You know that this isn't godly living. This is ungodly living. Okay. But yet they continue on. They press forward. So the Bible says he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts. So they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts nor turn and I will heal them. That doesn't sound like a once saved, always saved kind of message to me. Okay. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved praise from men more than praise from God. And some folks was ashamed of the gospel and they were more concerned about not hurting somebody's feelings. And that's the reason why some of these folks ended up in their grave and they didn't hear even down to their last days a word about Jesus. Okay, I didn't want to make her mad. That's why I didn't talk to her about Christ. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Well, you know how people are. So you see, the Pharisees, the Pharisees had put that fear in those people. So they wouldn't even praise Jesus. Okay, son of God. But they was more concerned about praise for men. And some folks is more concerned about men's feelings women's feelings i'm not gonna talk to my partner because i know all he gonna do is start arguing and he gonna start he gonna be mad at me and he might even put his hands on me so i'm not gonna say nothing to him he's an error she's an error when they sit up there and they want to say things like oh uh you know once saved always saved and uh so and so went to a better place and we know better and we know better but we'll let them have it because they're going through grief at that particular time. But sooner or later, it may not be us, but it may be somebody else that might come up to them and say, Honey, let me tell you the truth about your aunt. Let me tell you the truth about your uncle. Let me tell you the truth. Because I found out that there were quite a few relatives that were mixed up in under Greek associations. Ungodly ones. Okay? Not righteous God. Not one true God, but some other gods. And they tried to say that they believed in the one true God. That was a lie too. They were serving men and they were serving ungodly gods. Right? Gods from some other dimension. Gods that would show up in their little chants. Okay? So don't tell me that they were serving the one true God because that's a lie. They weren't. Okay? So when you look at some of these family affiliations, associations, and so forth, you'll find out who was really serving someone that was not the one true God. When you start looking at their documents that they leave behind, you'll find out why they went through as much as they went through and why God took away some of their dearly beloved and close family members. Because some folks, they didn't realize that when they took some of these oaths, they offered up a uh, blood sacrifice. It doesn't just apply to the entertainment industry. It applies to some of our relatives who are mixed up with some of these associations. They know that if you ain't willing to give up your own soul, then uh, you can get all sorts of stuff, right? All sorts of benefits through Satan's kingdom. But then in time, 
Satan is going to demand a blood sacrifice. And usually that blood sacrifice may come in the form of a son or daughter. It may come uh, through a partner. Okay? That person was mixed up in some things. So I'm telling you, this is real. This isn't any uh, thing that we should be taking lightly. And and all of these folks who want to go and down into the water for all the wrong reasons when it when it comes to baptism, or those that believe that umpteen years ago they're still good, when meanwhile they know that they have not rededicated their lives to Christ. Because this is what I'm ultimately doing with this message. I'm sending some folks back to a rededication ceremony. I'm sending them back to a reconciliation, meaning that you need to dedicate, rededicate your life to Christ. Your old belief, your childhood belief from way back when, and you know you didn't got mixed up with a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of things over the course of your years. You know you got pride that's in the way of walking with Christ. You know that you've allowed other people to hinder you from walking with Christ. It's time to rededicate your life to Christ. You know that you've allowed the love of money to distract you all these years. It's time to rededicate your life to Christ. That childhood faith, that baptism, nah. You didn't understand all of what was going on back then. But now as a man, as a woman, you understand. And you don't want to lead this world. And somebody like myself or somebody else says, <laughs> right, some things like, you know, he told you he didn't believe in Christ like that. You know, he said that he wasn't in the God. You know, he said that he wasn't into the church or the Bible. So we need to stop saying he inherited the kingdom of God because he didn't. Okay. Lord Jesus. And then once you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you go through the baptism again, right, with the understanding and you are filled with the spirit of truth. Okay. Where is that in the Bible? Well, let's go over to John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. The problem is, is that a lot of people fall by the wayside with Jesus uh, because they don't obey him. He was speaking to them that day before they went here and, and went there. He was riding in the car. He was on the bus and he was talking and people was being disobedient. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Verse 16, and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. If you are going to use somebody's death as a witnessing tool or you're going to use it as an example, if you will, of how God is almighty, how he's powerful or what have you. Can you please remind these individuals to be obedient and that a lot of times the reason why people end up leaving this earth prematurely is as a result of disobedience. When the wise counselor spoke and said, don't go over there, the person went anyway. When God used the individual and convicted him on sin, okay, and, and that person decided to go about his or her business anyway, come on now, there was disobedience that took place. And so you need to use these examples to convict the, especially the young people that this is what happens when you disobey the Lord. Not any speech about, Oh, so-and-so went to a better place, especially if you don't know that to be true. Instead, you need to be using that as a tool to let folks know this is what happens when you step out of fellowship with the Lord. This is what happens when you disobey the Lord. Yes, we are going to pass away somehow, some way, but there are some ways that people pass away that is to bring glory to the almighty God. And we can use those situations to bring glory to the Lord. Sit back for a while and allow the Lord to use what has recently taken place or happened years ago to be able to convict some folks on some of their sin or all of their sin. <laughs> The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, believer, for he lives with you and will be in you. Okay. Why? Because you accepted Jesus, because you went down in that water, because you decided that you wanted to change your mindset. You wanted to repent. You confessed him before the masses and you told him, look, this is what I did, but I'm not doing it no longer. Did these people who left prior, okay, did they confess him? Did they truly repent? Did they change their mindset? 
were they baptized as adults in full understanding? I will not leave you. Right? That's what happens. Once you go down, right, and in in, uh, Jesus' name, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. And this this was spoken to those who believed, okay? Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever, listen closely, whoever has my commands and obeys them. Listen again. Whoever has my commands and obeys them. He is the one who loves me. Did that individual who left prior to, was he obeying God's commands? He who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him. Once again, skipping down, John 14, 23, Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. Did that person obey God's teaching? My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. Okay? A lot of folks don't love God, love Jesus, love teachings. That's why they do their own thing. Reading on, these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I've spoken while still with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. You see, you see the spirit of the Lord, when he is with you, he's going to teach you. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you when the spirit of the Lord is not with you and you are falling by the wayside and you're doing what you want to do. You end up at the wrong place at the wrong time. You end up following after other gods. You end up making money your God. You end up uh, creating all sorts of division within the family, not for godly reasons, but for ungodly reasons. Come on now. Jesus is the way of the father. John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled as a result of someone's passing. Don't let your heart be troubled as a result of someone coming against you because they don't want to believe God, because they don't want to obey his commands, because they want to believe that once saved, always saved, because they want to believe in some childhood faith, some childhood baptism. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You are to trust in God. And trust also in me, which is Jesus Christ. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. See, this is where the believers start talking all this stuff about I will come back. Jesus is going to come back and all that, right? Because this is what the Bible says. He's going to come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Now, this is what the disciples said. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way. Did you hear that? This is why the believers say these things. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. You see, you got to go through Jesus. You can't go through mama. You can't go through daddy. You can't go through your money. You can't go through sex. Some folks got these sex rituals as if it's going to draw them near to God. Oh, no, it's going to draw you near to something, but it won't be to God. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Did that one who passed away, did he accept Jesus, did she accept Jesus or did they accept their bodies as their own God? I fell away. I told you if I would have died in 1996, I know I was going straight to hell because I know what Galatians 5 said at the time. And I know what Ephesians 5 said. And I knew what John, the book of John said. You cannot tell me that I was going to go to heaven. A childhood faith. I had one. 21 years old old going through that trying situation. And you mean to tell me, oh, she was going to be all right? No, she wasn't. Looking at me back then? No. So stop telling these lies and these delusions. The person has to go through Jesus. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It doesn't say... We supposed to go through some Greek gods? I 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And how? How? Because they accepted Jesus. How? Because they repented. How? Because they baptized. They were baptized. Come on now. We got to stop telling lies. We got to stop exaggerating. We got to stop sugarcoating. And we got to bring the truth for what the truth is. Folks got to get back into the word of God and read and stop going along with cliche statements. That's it. I have said more than enough. As a parent, you are responsible for teaching your children truth. You are responsible for uh, making sure that they know. And then once they are gone, <laughs> it's on them. It's on them. We can't keep talking about uh, what somebody did back in the day, what somebody's parent did back in the day. No, that's a grown man. That's a grown woman now. OK, what did they do? What did they do while they walked this earth? What did they do? I want to see evidence and proof. Right. And a lot of times folks don't have evidence and proof. The Bible even says most people don't believe in Jesus. OK. They don't. So that is it. I thank you so much as always for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, hey you're missing out right so please do also if you haven't given we do welcome donations and do check the description box for anything that might be of interest thank you as always blessings to you don't be deceived